Uh, first off, good morning. Um, cold day brings you out here, but I'm sure uh, in the spirit of what we're trying to do, it makes it kind of fun. You know, just walking around the ballpark on my way over here, it was like, like just the uh, energy of, of, of people and the fans is just sort of amazing. And it's always striking because it is sort of ironic. Every time we have uh, our winter warm-up, it actually always becomes wintry. Uh, you know, you think about the last six or seven weeks here, it hasn't been too bad, but uh, it hasn't uh, disheartened anybody. I think the energy here is amazing, and I think it's going to be a really fun weekend. And when you think you couple it with um, our warm-up, you couple it with uh, our caravans, and then the writer's dinner, it just is, it makes for just uh, putting the St. Louis Cardinals back on the map. Uh, I think we, we all enjoy that, and we're excited about it. And so um, it's going to be a nice weekend, and looking forward to uh, – seeing some faces I haven't seen in a while and uh, hopefully being able to chat with some players as well. So that'll be, that'll be great. Um, you know, just to touch on a little bit on our off season, um, you know, I, I, I always feel like you're kind of known for like what you've done. And, you know, we were pretty aggressive early on, on trying to address what we felt we had to do. And, and that was find some innings. And so um, I think a lot of people anticipate or, or sort of look at our offseason maybe as it's slow or we didn't really do what we needed to do, but we're pretty excited about where our roster is. Um, you know, you think about where we were on October 1st versus where we are today. We've had a lot of roster turn. Um, we've brought in a lot of new faces. Um, we've been strategic about it because we've been trying to create some depth at our minor league system, but also at our big leagues. Um, as we sit here on January 13th, is there still some things that could happen? Of course, um, you know, there, there's learned a long time ago in the off season, there's no really a finish line until the off season's over and you uh, start the season. So, um, you know, we're going to keep looking and, and continue to see if there's ways to improve this club or, or some additions. And overall, though, we feel good about where we are, but, um, you know, there's always some work to do. So at that time, be happy to take some questions. Well, if there's no questions, I'll leave. Well, well, the way your roster is currently constructed, what do you think is, is the portion that you're most excited about? Well, I, I think the biggest change from a year ago to where we are today is, is just the veteran leadership. Um, you know, we've kind of touched on this uh, uh, throughout the off season, but you know, I, I definitely feel like we didn't we didn't really calculate the the, the lo losing the voices of somebody like. Pujols, Molina, and even Wayno to some extent um, being injured for a lot. And I, and I think you know what we tried to do this offseason was, was look at people that could carry that voice back or bring it back. And, and so that's something that we were very focused on. But it's one thing to have a voice, but you also have to still do the job. Um, but I do feel like we're, when you look back over the last 365 days from where we were from a rotation standpoint to where we are today, I think our confidence is much higher. So when you look at what yeah, I mean the budget question always comes out, payroll question. The, you know, it's it's probably not as black and white as people would like to think it is. Um, you know, depending on what the type of investment might look like, it's something that you know we can always take to ownership if we feel it's important or, or a good value. But um, do I think there's some room in the in the payroll if we needed to? Yes. When you read redone the bullpen, swing and miss, you're going for swing and miss, guys that throw really hard. How do you like the, the setup, the makeup of your bullpen right now? Yeah, actually, like, on a personal level, my goal is just to get out. Like, you know, if, if, if we get strikeouts, great. Um, I, I think uh, where our bullpen is, it's, 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 a, it's stronger. Um, you know, is there something that we could still possibly do, possibly. Um, I think the big thing too is just to understand like now that we've added those guys in the rotation, how does that have a trickle down effect in the bullpen? And so I think obviously we'll use spring training to, to determine that and see what that looks like. But we definitely feel like, uh, you know, we, we've added a lot of depth to our pitching. Well, you mentioned uh, the guys that are at the front end of that rotation now, the innings that you can get. Through. It feels like as Major League Baseball is kind of going with shorter starts, you guys are hoping to get longer starts. What is the benefit of that that you guys are hoping to see? Well, I think we, we <laughs> would you agree last year we were we had a lot of shorter starts, right? Yeah. yeah. So what happens when you have shorter starts? You, you tend to put a lot more pressure on your bullpen. So there's really two ways to structure your bullpen. You, you, you have just a very dynamic bullpen that can tolerate high volume or high use, 
or you have to create a bullpen that has a ton of flexibility in it, meaning guys with options. So as you start to tire, you can flip out. Um, what we're trying to do is sort of thread that needle. Um, we would like our starters to go deeper because if we, if we can shorten the game, we now feel like we have a bullpen that can manage that. Um, you know, last year we just put so much stress on the bullpen really from day one. I don't think we ever really got on track. So um, as we look at, at sort of the difference of that is that's what we're hoping to see happen. So yeah, maybe the league as a whole is trying to um, find ways to, to uh, shorten starters. But I, I think like, in the end, you'll see a trend where starters will try to go deeper. Mo, optimistically, what ways is this roster constructed uh, that you see can win in October in the playoff system, the modern, the new playoff system? Well, I definitely feel like in a short series, the types of arms we have, we can we can then shorten the starter, um, and then you know kind of just start doing the churn. But I think, again, it, it's, you know, someone brought up swing and miss, someone brings up getting outs. I mean, this is really the, the part that matters. Um, how you do it, you just have to get the outs. And I think this group is capable of that. And when you think about a short series, just imagine maybe someone doesn't actually get to start, but someone can come in in the third or fourth or fifth and buy you time. We've talked over the years about building a team to make the playoffs, and is there a difference between building a team to make the playoffs and building a team to win the championship? I know it's threading the needle to use your phrase. Can you describe the strength of your team right now and the goal of your team realistically for 2024? Well, our goal is always to win, right? But that, you know, if I, if I come up here and say it differently, that's terrible. But the, the fact is, is like you, you got to get to October before you can worry about winning in October. And, you know, I think for us, we feel like, you know, we're going to be able to compete in the Central and expectations are high. So, you know, I think. We look at our, like how we played last year. A lot of things didn't go right for us. Um, we we'll certainly believe in this team. We believe in our everyday club, and you know a lot of these younger guys that got some experience last year. I think that'll serve them very well in 2024. Well, how important was finding a guy like Kittredge uh, in the market, a right-hander with proven kind of leverage experience to add to that? Uh, it was critical. Uh, you know, we. we now there's still guys out there in the free agent market that could probably check that box, but you know this was a deal that we were we were dealing from our depth, and, and so to be able to do that, um, especially somebody that you know arguably didn't perform in the last two years, but was really good in 2021. I think the unique thing about him is is a he's coming from the Tampa system, so like he understands how he might be used, and so he's not someone that's going to be like ninth ninth inning or nothing kind of thinking, and. Um, I believe in 2021, he actually pitched in all 11 innings, which is such a unique like thing, right? Like, so that means he was used as an opener, but he also meant he closed a few games. And so I mean, that's pretty remarkable to have that on your, on your resume. So I just think he's going to give us a lot of flexibility on how we think about using him. And you know, we do think there's a lot of upside in that arm. But speaking of uh, Kittredge and the Rays organization, you recently brought up Heimblum as an advisor and Kittredge, Robertson, Fernandez, O'Brien all have connections to him. Did Heim Bloom play a role in these acquisitions this offseason so far, and how do you envision his influence in future acquisitions? I would say that I, I would bounce these acquisitions off of him um, just because he had that dotted line connection. Now, some of them, you know, he remembered better than others, but, um, you know, certainly if you have a resource, you should tap into it, and, and that's what we did. In terms of how I see him being used moving forward. Um, obviously, his, his title is going to be used in an advisory role. But as you can imagine, you know, trying to think about how we want this organization to look in the next few years, having him help us sort of have a better understanding, like, you know, how do we look relative to industry? Um, when you think about someone that's had experience in Tampa, you think about someone who oversaw baseball operations for Boston, it's a pretty unique resume. And, and to be able to have someone like that join us, I think he's going to be a, a, a huge asset for us um, as we try to understand, like, really, where are we? Well, when we talked to you in Florida last spring, the 87 year extension, you were pretty clear that it was you or your hope was to sort of step back, wind down by the end of 25 in terms of your operational responsibilities. Is that still happening you think for you that makes the most sense? I would imagine that's going to stay pretty true. I mean, I don't want to sit up here today on January 13th and re retire, <laughs> but. I think having a, a succession plan and uncoupling 
some of the things that I've been involved in at, at such a high level. I think I'm starting my 17th season in the seat, so it's 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 probably you know reasonably to, to think that having a different voice at some point would, would make a lot of sense. And and so as I think about where the organization is and, and, and where we need to go, you know, Bill and I have had a lot of discussions on what we want to see that look like, and, and so. You know, a lot of people are sort of jumping to conclusions with the Heim hire, but I would say that at the very least, it strengthens our bench, at the very least. And where it leads to, we will see. But, you know, we have a lot of capable people in our front office. Um, obviously, Mike Gersh is someone that's, that's well thought of in the industry. You know, Randy Flores is, is, is a riser. So, you know, I, I feel pretty good about where the organization is, but there's also some things that are going to change over time, and I just want to make sure we're positioned in that way. Mo, well, you've been the spokesman for the team really a lot since the pandemic. That's kind of where, I know, before that, too. Um, do you imagine that changing then, as, as some of these guys have known, there's a panel that involves Hirsch and Flores and Megan Moyes on it as well, Gary. Do you imagine over the next two years that that might change a little bit, that they're their profile might become more prominent? Hard to say. Um, you know, obviously, if we determine what the succession plan looks like, that might be a, a good strategy. Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm a control freak, but I, I do think like messaging and, and how you <laughs> position things is critical to a success of a franchise. So uh, I do think having like, you know, one voice from this side of things is helpful. Well, you mentioned this amount of time that you've been doing this and all these winter warm-ups you've come to, do you still get a kick out of seeing a player be introduced to Cardinals all of this for the first time? Like Sonny Gray, I know you had your eye on for a long time over the years. Are you looking forward to seeing him get a taste of what this is like this weekend? Absolutely. And matter of fact, I was up in my office before coming here, and he was being es es escorted over to Ballpark Village, and he was with his kids, his wife, and I was thinking, like, it's got to be pretty cool for him. Because, uh, again, like, just walk around here, and it is a fun little vibe. And, and granted, it's 20 degrees, but no one's complaining. People are enjoying it. And I think, like, you know, as I and I, I was over at a Ballpark Village earlier this morning and ran into Kyle Gibson, and he's like, you know, this is kind of what makes this place special. And as you guys all know, because you cover our team, but what makes this place special is three million fans, right? And, and being able to play in front of good crowds and. and passionate fans, and that's, that's what makes this place awesome. You're clearly thinking about the future when you're talking about it. You know, are they, was he a player that you kind of said, I want to score before it's too late? I mean, was, are there players Back like to that? Sonny? Yeah. Are there players like that for you that say, if, 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 is there, if there's ever going to be a chance, this has to be it? <laughs> Definitely probably had to be it, uh, uh, you know, especially if you're trying to capture some <laughs> upside. But, like, I feel like there are times where you have, like, this – connection to a player that, that does go back a long time and, and you know we were we were really hopeful that we would get him in that draft and you know unfortunately it didn't work out but now to reunite I think it's pretty cool but you know I, I think the one thing and we, we've touched on this earlier in the offseason but all these guys want to be here you know? and you know, Sonny Lance and, and Gibby that's that's what they wanted and, and I think guys that want to be here tend to uh, give you a high rate of return well, you mentioned the fans there. What, what do you expect the reaction to be, and how do you think that their uh, what their commitment might have been tested by last year's results? So I don't understand your question. What do you expect your reception? You mentioned the fans and how they are what makes. Oh, so do you think I'm gonna get booed? Well, yeah. you you were booed. I mean, did yeah. you put a point on it. So did you have your new bar joke lined up? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I'm gonna need that. Um, yeah, I mean it's a tough business. Right, well, had a lot of success here, but one bad year, and it's thrown out. But yeah, hopefully we rebound. Well, what's your your theory on some teams of the Braves locking up their young core? You've got a young core kind of coming. Uh, the Braves, you know, acted proactively, uh, tried to lock up those guys for the long term. Is that something you've studied or believe in or are interested in? Well, I think if you study us, you'll know we have a history of doing that. Um, you know, currently we haven't been able to to do that, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say that that's not something we would discuss with some of our young players. But yes, we'd be interested in that if it made sense on both sides. The opposite end of that is Paul Goldschmidt will be a free 
I think right now, I think everybody just wants to see how the season starts. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we want to get off on the right track, <coughs> and then we can address things like that. Do you want Yeah, I think, look, I, I definitely think we could have made trades with some of our position players because they were asked about a lot. Um, but in the end, we just felt like it's a good young group and we want to keep this together. And uh, we're pretty excited about our everyday group. Well, this might be the best group of the left team to have that you guys have had just in the totality in a while, a big league club. What do you guys see as the value in having the quantity of options? Well, I think the good news is a lot of these guys can play different spots on the, on the infield and the outfield. And so just that flexibility, I think, is important. I mean, obviously, you're going to have to make sure you get everyday playing time and figure out ways to get at bats. But I think having that depth gives us a strength. On that point, Mo, you mentioned that you, know, you have a new center fielder in Tommy Edmund. Is he also your reserve shortstop? I would definitely say he's insurance for that at the moment, yeah, for sure. But, you know, we're pretty bullish on where Wynn is. And I think like when you look at kind of his history, usually gets off to a slow start and then sort of meets the league over time. Now, he had a small window last year to try to see what this league was about. Obviously had some struggles offensively, but we believe that having that ability to get him up to the big leagues last year is going to help him in 2024. Mo, you, uh, you, did, you let, uh, I think you told the MLB got John that uh, Tommy had had wrist surgery. Is there a reason that wasn't disclosed before when you were asked multiple times? I don't recall being asked, um, and I probably just forgot. I mean, it was pretty benign, but uh, if you had asked just a general question of who had surgery, I probably just forgot. I wasn't trying to hide anything. How's, how's he doing? How's Tommy's status? Seems like he's doing great. Good. Does anybody besides Tommy have to have this year after the season? Well, now I've got to look at the roster. Make a mistake. Should have some music going. Like Jeopardy music? Something, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <coughs> Nothing's jumping out. season. How are progress with Dylan Carlson and Brendan Donovan as far as putting the head towards spring training? And, uh, uh, both seem to be in really good spots. Uh, Dylan's doing most of his rehab down in Phoenix and all the feedback we've gotten has been very positive. And then uh, Donovan is actually down in Jupiter, so we have laid eyes on and hands on him and we're really encouraged where he's at. Is he limited at all in his throwing or will he be in I spring? Think spring training, he should be ready to go. Regardless of position. Mm -hmm. Mo, you mentioned having confidence in Glenn and the role that he can play, but how, with the way your roster is lined up, how important is it that you take hold of that role so that Tommy can stay in center and everything can line up the way you guys are hoping defensively? Well, I definitely think that makes us the best defensive club. Um, obviously, Dylan Carlson can play center, so I mean, I think we could have some flexibility there, but I do think if, if Wynn's at short, Tommy's in center, that's probably the strongest defensive club we could have. What do you need offensively from those two? I mean, they're, they're gifted defensive players. But if you play both of them in the lineup, is that enough offense? Do you need something from them? Um, I think the answer is yes. I mean, like, you know, Tommy's been someone that's hit all over mm -hmm. the order before. And then, you know, I, we are, we do have a belief that, you know, you'll see more offense from win than what you saw last year. Is that the home base percentage? Yeah, and I just think like just more comfortable like, understanding you know your approach and what you do. But when you look at the overall club, you think about it as a pretty offensive-minded team. Um, so I, I think we have the bandwidth to sort of absorb a little bit if it's a if it's a slow, a slow start. Well, when you were negotiating with Lance Lynn, what were those conversations like with as far as him maybe wanting to bounce back a little bit? He's, he's mentioned that as far as you know gave up 
bunch of home runs last year. He wants to eliminate that. What were your conversations like with him wanting to bounce back and, and be better? Well, it's, it's a couple things. One is, you, you know, that, that's nice, right? Like, I, I understand he wants to do better. And the key is, do we think there's a, a path to be better? And, you know, so you have your, your, your pitching coaches take a look at his video, study a lot of the track man information or Hawkeye and try to determine is something, can we improve on something? And, and that's something he was really open-minded to and, and, and interested in, our thoughts on that. But ultimately, you know, he's a real competitor for everyone around him. Uh, he knows last year did not go the way um, he had hoped. But um, so his off-season training, his preparation, working with our coaches has been very intentional. And um, you know, I think he's just excited to put the birds on the bat back on. And uh, but he, he expects to be a positive contributor on this team. So when it comes to the uh, pitching depth at the upper minor league level, I mean, how confident do you feel in seeing that connected at some point in 2024? Well, I think uh, I was pretty bullish on that group last year, right? It didn't quite work out as I'd hoped. But my point is they're a year older. They've experienced some things now. And I think when you look at, you know, th speaking of guys like McGreevy and Graceffo, but, but that group, I think, learned a lot last year. And then I think you, you couple that with a lot of the players that we acquired at the trading deadline. I mean, clearly, we improved our depth in a lot of ways. I mean, Ron was starting games for us last year. And, you know, now we're not even, like, discussing him necessarily in our rotation. So I just think that the overall breadth of what, what you have, especially what potentially could be at Memphis, is a lot stronger than what we were here. Well, along well, those lines, do you, you feel like you guys are in a position where you might be able to strongly consider some of that group as bullpen options as far as the way to transition them to major leagues and the way to take it up the ball? Of course, and that's what I was referring to earlier. If you are, if, if your starters are, are good, then someone else isn't starting, and that could transition into the bullpen. We, I think we've always talked about, or recently we've talked about, like, you know, Thompson and Tom uh, Libertor, because we've seen them in those. Are there other guys in that group that you feel like might be a good fit for that? Um, Again, it's all about guys who can get out, right? Now, we, we've done it in the past where we've taken someone who's, who's a younger, talented player like a Carlos Martinez and put them right in the bullpen at the big leagues. And then eventually we, we try to get them to start at some point. Uh, Trevor Rosenthal was another guy that, that started that went um, to the bullpen. So. You know, we're always open-minded to that, and you know, as we look at how spring training unfolds, that will be definitely something that's in consideration. When you think about that, when you look to what that means for their future progress as a starter, how do you view the innings of, you know, as a reliever, if you're in 60, 70 innings this year, how does that impact the potential development as a starter? Well, I think that's, that's the tricky balance, right? Um, when you take somebody that ends up with 75, 80 innings, and then you're going to put them in the rotation the next year, what's a fair amount of workload that can seem reasonable? Is it double? Is it 2.5? Like, it, it's, it's, I don't think there's any like perfect answer to this, and that's something we're just all trying to navigate. But when you have some of these younger, talented guys, you'd rather them continue to build to what you think their ultimate job will be but you know, players want to be in the big leagues, so uh, we understand that as well. Year two, year two for your starting catcher. Uh, what do you see this year for your catching spot? Yeah, you know, he's been very intentional this off season. Uh, been working really hard. Um, I think uh, he's excited. I think he knows our group a lot better than he did a year ago. And then I think uh, having someone to bounce stuff off of by the name of Yadier Molina, I think it's something that, that he welcomes as well. So. Um, you know, I just feel it's going to be a lot more natural and a little more organic, and I think it's going to be something that, uh, you know, he kind of found himself in the second half last year, and, you know, that's what we hope to see for a full season. Good mm -hmm. health for all, 110 starts, 120, you're his backup? Uh, our backup is uh, Ivan Herrera, and I hope he gets to play a little bit. Um, what we don't want to do is go down that path where we did it with a lot with Yachty, where he just absorbs all the games. Um, Herrera is a talented young player, and he needs to be playing a little bit. Talking about Yadier Molina, what would be his role as a special advisor? Um, 
He's going to be like my right hand man on everything. No, he's going to be someone that uh, you know gets his feet wet. Um, I plan on meeting with him whenever he's done in Puerto Rico, um, in terms of uh, kind of getting with him and letting him understand how we think about like player acquisitions, how we value players, and, and just really giving him an introduction to that side of the business. And then, of course, uh, you know anything he can do to help some of our younger catchers, we're going to welcome. Well, you kind of intentionally left the door open. You kind of left the door open when talking about there might be things out there that pique your old interest. You've got time and ability to maybe um, jump on some things if they. Is that mostly bullpen focused, or could that be rotation focused if the deal is right? It could be anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, not closing a door to anything at this point. Mo, you have uh, you have Yadi on your staff. How much will he interact with the coaching staff and be a part of that? I think he's going to want to do that a lot. So my guess is his comfort level is going to be more like towards that side of things. But we definitely know that we want to work on some of the things that we deal with on the front office side that he wants some exposure to. You, and what, what's been the tone of the, of the coaching group and the manager this, this winter, especially coming out of last season? And what uh, would you like your manager to kind of learn from this year? Well, um, I think there's lots of things that we can take away from last year. And I think we, we all have to do a little self-reflection on what that looks like. And I think we've all done that internally. But I think the, the mood of, of our coaching staff, which I haven't been together with them since the season ended as a mm -hmm. entire group, but I think the addition of, of Dan Descalzo is going to be a really helpful um, fit for our club. And I think just you know looking at that working relationship with Ollie and, and he has is, is been very positive. Um, and we got to witness that at Larry Williams. Well, you all, they have concerns about whether it's the optics or the reality of having a manager who is going to be the last year of his contract and having a franchise legend in the front office who has said many times he wants to manage in the big leagues. Are you concerned about the potential for whether it's friction or whatever else that a company's had set up? Um, not really, but I can understand why it would be a question. Um, yeah. It could become real. We'll find out. But I, I don't think entering into this would make sense to like approach it that way. Uh, you know, clearly, I'm a big advocate for Ollie. I believe in him, and, but we also recognize like last year was not good, and so you know we have to make some adjustments. We have to do things differently, and, and hopefully, we do it in a successful manner. Well, it's been kind of a backdrop to the offseason for a number of teams. Um, what for you guys was the role of the RSA? It really didn't affect us that much. Um, you know, clearly we're cognizant of it. Um, if there's potential to lose significant dollars, I mean, you guys all work for companies. When your companies start to lose money, what happens? You, you either downsize or um, sometimes you see a reduction in staff or something like that. But it's it's. For us, we kind of went into this year knowing that, that we have to rebound, so we weren't going to look at, at ways to necessarily try to penalize anything on the operational side. And, and so, you know, it hasn't had a real adverse effect on us, but it could down the, down the road if we don't right the ship. Did it have any impact of shorter term deals? No, not really. Um, again, I, we chase deals that players really want to be here. You know, like, and that was critical. We wanted to jump the market because we didn't know where the market was going. Well, when when you look at your lineup, if everyone's healthy, can you just describe the, the ceiling, the offensive impact in regards to run production? Well, I think uh, really you're just going to see a more mature lineup than what you saw last year, uh, in the sense that I think there were a lot of growing pains in our lineup last year. There were a lot of injuries. But if we can avoid injuries, I think you're going to see a much more dynamic offense. Well, we got time for maybe one or two more, and then we've got to get you back over to Ballpark Village. Mo, well, you mentioned you mentioned that uh, everybody in the organization has done a lot of self-reflecting after last year. I remember you mentioning that you had some sleepless nights. What has been the key of your own self-evaluation, your self-reflection from last year? You know, I imagine like. And this won't come as a surprise to this group, but like, there's probably a little bit of arrogance when you do something as long as I've done it, and and approaching it in that way is not helpful. You have to have a little sense of 
humility on, on what can happen and, and realizing that it's hard to keep everyone happy, but you know, still trying to be true to how we make decisions and why we make decisions. How, have we decided to tinker a little bit on how we make decisions? Yes, because clearly how we, what we did last year didn't work and um, you know, that's part of it. But on a personal level, it's, it's you know, understanding that mistakes do happen. Katie, did you have one last one? Quick one. I got to kind of the answer. But we talked a lot about veteran leadership. Bill Arnado had a down year last year. What does he need to do and what are you hoping to see to make sure that he returns to form since he'll be such a critical piece of your club next year? Yeah, I spoke with uh, Nolan about a week ago, and I think he's in a great headspace. He he understands like you know last year didn't go well for a lot of people, and uh, him included. But he realizes the value he is to this team and the importance he is to this team, and uh, he's been very uh, purposeful in his off season to get himself prepared. And so physically, he feels really good. I think mentally, he's in a great headspace, um, and so he's excited to come to camp. Thank you, Blaine. Yeah, one more if we can. Oh. Yeah, no, I wanted to ask with, you, with your outfield, the way you have sort of the new bar and walker sort of position in your corners and potentially guys could be there for a period of time, what would you like to see as far as a step forward, or what do you feel like a step forward for them looks like this season? Well, I think in, in, in new bar's case, just the ability to show you can go pole to pole, right? <laughs> Meaning, like, stay healthy. He's got tremendous upside, tremendous talent. And I think in Walker's case, it's, you know, from a defensive standpoint, you hope he can get to where he's at least league average from a defensive standpoint. We certainly felt like he was trending that way towards the end of last year. He's been uh, spending the month of uh, January working with Jose Okendo down in Florida, so that's encouraging. Um, but I think it's, it, as you can imagine, from an offensive side, it's a pretty exciting group. Um, guys that actually profile out as corner outfielders, that sky could be the limit. And so ultimately, that's what you're hoping to see come together. All right. Well, thank you.